what if instead of spawning in your old generic Minecraft world, you spawned here on one single block? That is gonna be my challenge today. I'm gonna be attempting to survive 100 days on this one block that infinitely regenerates when you break it. So let the challenge begin. Day one, what more than just break the block underneath me so I can get more dirt to expand my island. As I was breaking these tree trunks, soon after I break them, I notice that out of nowhere, a chest appears. And when I open it, there was two wheat seeds and an oak sap. Once I collected my goodies, I broke the chest and expanded my island even more so I have more space so I don't fall off the edge. I plant the oak sapling, make a crafting table, make some sticks, make the usual tools so mining the block is a lot easier. Soon after I break this oak log, a friend appears. I am no longer alone on my island. I'm gonna name him Percy. I decided to make some oak slabs and expand my island even more so me and Percy have more room to fit on my island together. Not long after, another chest appears. I open it up and there's a water bucket. I place the water bucket down and block underneath the chest so things such as gravel and sand do not fall through. When I break this oak log, a chest explodes with hearts. They're coming out flying everywhere. When I open the chest, I see oak logs, a sapling and a torch. I then proceed to break the chest and this can only mean one thing, the next phase. It wasn't long after until I started making some more tools, i.e. like a sword and a pickaxe. Just so mining can make it easier, I start hacking away at the block and all of a sudden, a new friend appears. Wow, another pig. I'm gonna name him Pinky. As I was mining away, it wasn't long until a cow appeared. I'm gonna name him Bob. And my piggy pushed me, so that means if you don't like the video and subscribe, you'll have bad luck for five years. Quickly after, a sheep spawned, so that means that I could make myself a bed and sleep. I decided to put all my resources to use to make some oak slabs, because now it is time to expand our island. After expanding my island, that was day one complete. Day two, I decided to make a little shelter for my animals so it's a place that they can call home. And pushing the animals in, I look back and all I can see is a pig stuck in a tree. It was Percy, rip the goat. I've collected all these extra items so I decided to put them into my chest just to clear up some inventory space. I decided now was the right time to make a farm. I put some water down and placed a block underneath for some water to sit. I made a hoe and decided to hoe all the dirt that was there and place my seeds. Next, I decided I was going to place a nine block square of dirt so I can plant trees and get an infinite wood source. I plant my saplings and wait for them to grow. I am also still continuing to mine the block and looking over at my animals I felt really bad so I decided to make some more space for them so that at least they can walk around. Also guys drop a comment below to give me some suggestions on what you want to see from my island if you want to see also another 200 days or what else you just want to see, do you just want to see some more PvP videos so drop a comment down below and give me some suggestions. I made a birch fence so it's easier to get in and out of my animal enclosure. I decided to break the middle piece of the fence and place down my birch gate. On the nightfall of day two I decided to do a little bit more expanding just to give me some more room on my island. I used some birch slabs just to expand my island and then the hearts appeared out of the chest. I collected all the items out of my chest and then I knew we were on to the next phase. I broke the chest and waited patiently for the timer to go down. I knew this phase was going to be even better so I can expand my island more and create more tools. Straight away I noticed we were in this stone phase. I decided to start breaking instantly so I could collect some resources. I started to upgrade my old dingy wooden tools to stone tools so they could last longer and be more efficient when it comes to breaking the block. I crafted a sword because I knew it wasn't going to be long before mobs started showing up and I needed a way to protect my animals. I kept digging away at the block and all of a sudden a mushroom cow spawns in front of me. I then decided to push him into the gate with the rest of my animals and I noticed that he was quite lonely so I started to break the block and all of a sudden he had a friend. I started to push him closer to his forever pal. 
Next thing I just decided to break the dirt around the block and fill it in with oak slabs just to give it a bit nicer detail. I decided to advance my eyelet and start breaking the block and then all of a sudden mobs started to appear. This was not going to be an easy fight. I built up three blocks of dirt so they couldn't reach me and I started fighting them from the distance. I saw them on the ledge so I knew I had to be quick to knock them off and I got them both in one hit. It was victory to me. I then started to do some miscellaneous work around my island such as check my furnaces and break the block and then out of nowhere a zombie appeared. This meant we went to war again. I'm doing everything I can to protect my animals and protect my island. I then started to hit them with critical headshots and it wasn't long before they were both defeated. I got the achievement Monster Hunter so I knew that I was a warrior to my island. I then started to do some decorative designs around the block just to spice it up a little. I then started to create fences around my block just to give it extra protection. If mobs were to ever spawn, at least I can trap them in and they can't harm my animals. I then put birch and oak fences down just to make it a bit more decorative. Oh Jesus, I can't build. I expanded the dirt on my tree farm just so I can place more saplings down and maximize the wood that I get. This will help me grow as many trees as possible. I started breaking away at the trees that already have grown and placed them in each corner of my one block. I put stone slabs on each corner just to give a nice touch. I decided to expand my animal farm so I, I went to make a bridge and I blocked the water and I slowly faded away. But we won't talk about that. And then out of nowhere a creeper came and he was about to explode but I managed to dodge it and run away before he could. I started fighting him from the distance taking one shot at a time. I have to be careful here in case he explodes and possibly kills one of my animals. With a few calculated sword hits to the head he was dead. The problem had been taken away. After I was done with the creeper I placed stone slabs around the outside of my island just so I can get some more space to walk around and stretch my legs. At night time at day 4 I decided to make a little bridge across this little island where my animals are going to be staying. I know it looks ropey now but I promise you it'll turn out good. I did some decorating on the island and then in the morning at day 5 I attracted all my animals over to this little bit of dirt section. As I was breaking the block another war had begun. Another creeper was there to destroy my island. I did the same tactics as last time because I knew they would work. Stay far back and hit calculated attacks of the head. This will cause the creeper to take critical damage and I knew one more swoop and he was dead. My island is safe. After the battle I decided just to keep breaking the block so I can gain more resources to expand my island and then the chest with the hearts appeared. I collected the coal and the spruce saplings. I then proceeded to break the chest and then I patiently waited for the next phase to come upon us. As I waited for the timer to tick down I then soon realised it was the snow phase. I quickly got started on breaking the block and it wasn't long before a companion showed. A wolf. All I needed was some bones and he would be my forever friend. Sparking out of nowhere a skeleton comes that I've never seen before. I have to keep my distance as I don't know what damage he's going to do. I hit a lucky shot on him from the right but he quickly turns around and hits me. I keep hitting him left and right as he doesn't see it coming. My stone sword does not do a lot of damage but I get him in the end. During the night of day 6 I started to build some barriers around my bridge so I don't fall off and die and lose all my stuff. On the morning of day 7 I decide to break down my tree farm and make it more decorative. I use some birch and some stone bricks around the edge just to give it that little bit of extra decoration. Day 8 a wandering villager appeared with some trades but I could not afford them so I just decided to kill him and take his leads. On day 8 while I was breaking the block two skeletons appeared and I knew this was going to be a hard battle. But luckily they started attacking each other. I was rooting for the guy on the left. Come on. Oh never mind. He died. Then with one swift hit of my sword he was dead. I used my spare iron to create a chest plate so I can get more protection. On the night of day 8 as I was breaking the block out of nowhere a monster party appeared and I knew I wasn't prepared for it. I ran away as far as I could to avoid getting any damage. When I had enough courage I ran up and started swinging with my axe and the monster party was over. On the night of day 9 a treat appeared. The chest. Yes. The next phase. Let's go. The chest had goodies that weren't very good. As usual we waited for the count to go down as we waited for the next phase and it was the desert phase. On day 10 I realised I had lost my water bucket so I melted the ice and was able to get my water back. 
As I was breaking the block, a diamond appeared. This meant I could upgrade my armor and tools and fight off the mobs easier. For the rest of the day 10, it was pretty boring. All I did was basically mine the block for the whole day and I got some goodies. I was able to get a trident and if I applied the loyalty, I knew it would be OP. On the nightfall of day 11, I created a handy wee invention which allowed me to create an infinite water source. You put water in the bottles and then fill up a cauldron and then you were able to get your bucket of water. This was overpowered and allowed me to get an infinite water source. I also had to rebuild my farm because I destroyed it because I had to get the water. And I realised to myself, I didn't have a house yet. So upon day 12 to 16, this was my time to build my house. Through day 17, I was just helplessly breaking the block, hoping some action would come my way. I was also hoping for some goodies such as iron and diamonds, but then some guardians appeared. This was not going to be an easy battle, as the guardians held a strength that was so great that it could almost kill me. With some calculated swings of my sword, I was able to defeat the guardian one by one. I had done it. For day 18, all I did was collect resources from my wood farm. On day 19, as I was breaking the block, the Elder Guardian spawned. I knew this wasn't going to be an easy fight as the Elder Guardian has got such severe strength, but with one swift hit of my axe, he was dead. When day 20 came around, it opposed the same challenges. It wasn't long before another monster party spawned. I ran away as I knew the Tridents were going to do great damage. In just two hits, it took half my health away. As brave as I did, I ran up to fight these trident zombies and I was swinging them from left and right, but they were overpowered. As I tried to escape, they got a lucky shot and I died. I respawned and tried to fight them with my fists. I got one of them, but I died again. And then I was able to knock the last one off with my cheeky wooden pickaxe. Look at the mess they left behind. Day 21, I decided I'm going to start a cow farm, so I got to breeding my cows. Oh, look how cute that baby is. Day 22, I decided to do some revamping of my block. I was going to make it bigger so monster parties could get trapped and it was easier to fight them off. I put a roof on it so things as blazes can't fly up. When I was inside my house, I realised I should really get a chest room. So, as I finished fighting this guardian, I decided to collect all my resources and build my chest room. When day 29 came upon us, that beautiful chest that we always like to see appeared. And as always, I collected my goodies out of it and waited for the next phase to count down. It looks very unpredictable as it is just a regular cobblestone, so I can't put a theme onto it. And to end off day 29, I decided to put my bucket of salmon and bucket of cod in my pool. In day 30, I had some jungle friends to keep me company. I got two parts. I was going to befriend them. I was able to make one of them my pet, but the other one just didn't want to be my friend. Bye bye Mr. Parrot. It wasn't long until day 31 came around the corner and we got a panda. I think I'm going to name him Poe, as in Poe from Kung Fu Panda. He's a bit of a chunky monkey so I had to break the fence to get him out. I then just was breaking the block as normal and then two witches appeared. This was going to be more tense as they both had potions. I got hit with the potion and I was slowly getting poisoned. I quickly regenerated my health as fast as I could so I could get out and fight these witches. I look out my window and the witches splashed Poe and he was gone. I knew I had to avenge him so I went in with all guns blazing and started fighting the witch. With some crucial hits against the witch, I was able to defeat him. And I noticed she killed my dog so this isn't the end. On day 32, I got this weird looking chest and there was an endermite spawn egg, which could come in handy sometime. I then just did a bit of maintenance of work around my house and got my farm up to scratch. It wasn't long after that before another intense battle was coming my way. Luckily, I ran away so they couldn't reach me. It wasn't long though until another monster party attacked me. I knew this time I had to be calculated with my shots in order to succeed in this battle. I kept my distance so I could have a plan of attack on how I'm going to defeat this monster party. 
I went all swords in and started attacking the spider that was coming at me. I then had to take some calculated swings at the fairies in order for them to die. I was able to hit one with a really nice clean shot and he was dead. Now one left and I got him. All that was left was to clean up the extra mobs inside my little pen. I was able to swing at them from outside the barrier and defeat them from there. Day 35, I decided to put my music disc on an item frame and keep it safe for when I get a jukebox. When day 36 came around, I noticed the chest appeared and as usual, I collected my goodies, which had a diamond in it, which I knew would become useful. And as always, I waited for the countdown to go down and this next phase was a desert phase. I knew this phase could contain a lot it wasn't long until friends started to appear, such as the llama. I think I'm going to name him Stewie. Day 37, I decided to make some birch slabs so I could start to make a bamboo farm and when things such as villagers come, I can make sticks in order to get some emeralds. I only made it small for now and I will be expanding it so I can get more sticks. Day 38 came and we got our first villager. This means we can start trading. His name was Donald. Hello Donald. Now it was time to gather our resources and build Donald a home. Upon first reactions, Donald seemed to like it. He ran straight away and slept. I think he knew he'd have a home. Then pillagers showed up. Luckily, none of them were carrying the bad omen effect and I was able to get rid of them with no problem. I decided to turn Donald into a Fletcher so I could get those easy emeralds through the stick trade. As you can see, 32 sticks is one emerald. This is going to be amazing. I broke the table just to see what other type of trades Donald will give me and soon enough with the sticks, Donald was able to give me arrows so this meant I could attack mobs with a bow. I got some sticks prepared and was ready to trade with Donald. As you can see, the achievement has been made. What a deal. This was going to be amazing. Upon day 45, four desert zombies attacked me. It was literally like a monster party. There were so many. I used the arrows that Donald had traded me to attack all of them. While battling them, I really wanted to get more space for my island. So day 46, I did that. Day 52, I got a new villager and for some reason he wouldn't go in with Donald so I had to try find different ways in order to push him towards the iron door and for some reason he just wasn't having it so I decided to trap him in my house for later. Soon after that another villager spawned in, his name was Bob and he was raring to get up with Donald and as I look around the corner both of them are on the same bed which is a bit frisky but what can you do? I think we should leave them both alone. Day 54, an interesting chest appeared and it had a piglin egg, which you never know might come in handy. Day 55, I just did my usual maintenance work around the house, collecting the bamboo and breaking down the tree. Then that time we all loved, the chest appeared. Oh, it had bottles of enchantment in it and some emeralds, which could come in handy. And then we waited for the clock to tick down. We were in the nether phase. This was going to be dangerous. Day 57, as I was breaking the block, I noticed that Piglin spawned. But this wasn't a hard battle as all I did was swing at them from outside the barrier. Then I continued to break the block and I got my first bit of ancient debris. I crafted a diamond pickaxe so I was able to mine it. And then not so long after, I crafted a diamond sword to protect myself. At least I got to replace my stone sword. Day 59, this massive pig spawned and he was knocking me back like there was no tomorrow. But he wasn't much of a threat as he wasn't doing great damage and I was able to kill him from outside my barrier. Swiftly moving onwards, I noticed when I was breaking the block, two blazes spawned and this was not going to be easy. They could literally burn down my island, but luckily I was quick enough to put out the fire. That was too close for comfort. On day 61, it came up a monster party was approaching and then I knew that this was not going to be easy. I ran away in fear. This time I had no plan. A gas was shooting at me from the distance and it was doing great damage. I had to go up and swipe him away, but he was the least of my worries. The blazes could erupt my island into pieces and there could be nothing left. 
I look back and my village is on fire. I need to put this out quick. As I see, all my trees are burning down, but I let them go. The bridge to my chest room is on fire, but I was quickly able to extinguish it. Now I had to rebuild my island, I crafted some oak slabs and got to work straight away. I started off repairing the bridge to my chest room. I knew next time I wasn't going to let the blazes away. Day 63, this was my chance to avenge my island. I sprinted in and just started attacking the blade, swinging left and right to kill him as soon as I could. I tried to go for headshots to get as much damage as I could, and then finally the blaze was dead, with minimal damage. Day 64, I just watched my parrot chill in the bath with my fish. Between day 64 and 65, I decided I was going to expand my farm so I can get more crops and be able to obtain more food. Day 66, I created a smithing table so my villager Bob can be able to trade me tools for emeralds. I collected all my bamboo and created them into sticks so Donald could trade me emeralds and get my first stone pickaxes. I created a blast furnace so I could change my one other villager into an armor. This meant that I could get diamond armor eventually from him. Day 69, I decided to do some revamping of the block once again and create a nice little pattern around it with some nice lamps. Day 70, I just did some more maintenance work and started testing out my bow accuracy by shooting this skeleton off the edge which I found was pretty funny and I noticed I'm terrible at shooting my bow. Day 71, I realised you could make wool from string as I remembered that my wolf killed my sheep for some reason. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Day 72, I realised that I hadn't made a cobblestone generator and it's probably the best idea too and I had to push my turtle off because he kept trying to go into the water which was very annoying. Bye bye little turtle. I feel no sorrow for the turtle. And that is the cobblestone generator in full. On day 73, I decided it was time to create something with the space I had made. So I decided I was going to make a really very creative nether portal design but it just turned out to be a shambles. I fed my cows and I didn't realise how many cows I actually had. Day 75, this was actually quite an achievement as I was able to build the nether portal. And then that chest we all like to see appeared again. It had a lava bucket and some netherite scraps which were definitely going to come in use. And then as always we waited for that counter to tick down to see the next phase and it was like a very mixed snow phase. I then decided to light the nether portal and jump in to see what it looked like. And actually, it was quite a decent nether. We were well protected and not surrounded by too much lava. So this was definitely going to be a good, good place to find some ancient debris. Day 78, I decided to expand my chest room because they were filling up very fast. And for some reason, I put bricks on the roof. Upon day 79, another monster party spawned right in front of my eyes. This time, they could follow me. I ran away and hid just to recover myself from the poison. The slimes weren't too difficult to attack. But the bees were the main problem. As soon as the bees were taken down, the phantoms were my next victim, but they didn't seem to care. So I just repaired my build. It wasn't long until day 80 came around and as I was mining, the chest we all like to see appeared again. It had a cake in it this time and a name tag. And I patiently waited for the upgrade time to go down and we were in some sort of stone phase again. I really don't know what to expect from this. On day 81, I plucked up the courage to go mining for some netherite so I can fully kit out my gear. I broke down to floor 12 in order to obtain some ancient debris. Between days 82 to 86, I was getting so lucky and I was able to find ancient debris left, right and centre. It was just coming at me and towards the end of it, I knew that I was going to be absolutely stuck. This was the best luck that I had ever had. Ah, I'm only joking guys, I was only able to get 13 ancient debris during those days. I smelted down the ancient debris and got all the gold that I could obtain and I started to make some netherite ingots. I was able to get 3 ingots which was going to be very helpful. I made a diamond chest plate and admit it does look sexy on me and I changed it to a netherite chest plate so it looks even better. From days 88 to 89 I tried my best to advance my villagers so much so I could get as much loot as I can for when I fight the ender dragon. I was able to obtain loads of armor and I also was able to change my diamond sword into a netherite sword so this was even better and I look dope. For the rest of the days I kept trading with the villager and they were advancing through every trade that I was doing. 
Through all these trades, I was able to get Ian up to diamond level, which was absolutely stoked. I was able to get him up to leggings and boots, and they cost a total of 22 emeralds, which was not very hard to obtain. Day 91, this is where the whole ship starts to sink. Another battle had commenced and it was with these fairy boys and for some reason my little pea brain decided not to run away to the furthest point. Instead, I decided to start attacking them with my sword, thinking that I was going to be the big saviour. And what you don't see in this little thing here is that there is a creeper right behind me and for some reason he wouldn't explode. I still tried my best to swat off these little flying fairies but I wasn't enough. In the next few seconds, I died. But overall, I didn't really mind as I had all my netherite armor and good tools in a separate chest. Day 92, I just created some extra armor just to protect myself so I don't have to use up my netherite armor. And then out of nowhere, these fairies appeared and I knew I wasn't going to be stupid this time. I ran into my house, but I didn't realize that they could fly through it. So I ran to the furthest point away as far as I could so that these fairies couldn't see me and I could distract them. I then started to take some calculated bow shots in order to kill the little villager that was spawning them. As I was quickly burning through my arrows, I realized I needed to get some calculated shots in order to defeat this little villager. And I got him. I had got him with my last arrow. On day 93, I kept doing my trades with my villagers and I also was able to make myself some diamond boots and I was able to get the diamond leggings. So now I had the chance to make myself almost full netherite armor. On day 94, I knew a monster party was on its way, so I ran away just so I could think in my head a strategy to attack them. I knew I was going to have to use my bow a lot, and luckily I had got some extra arrows from my villager. I started taking some calculated bow hits in order to defeat all these mobs, and then I ran in, all guns blazing, to attack them with my sword, and luckily I had won. And on day 95, it was the last chest that I was going to see. I can't believe we have made it this far. And as always, I collected all the goodies out of it and then slowly waited for that countdown to go down. It was almost certain on what this next phase was going to be. I had it in my mind. I knew that this was going to be the end phase. I knew the Ender Dragon wasn't far off, so I had to equip myself. I was able to get a diamond helmet in order to complete my armor set. This meant I had full protection in when I was going to go to battle. But look how kitted out I look. From day 97 to 99, I went searching for some ancient debris in order to get full netherite armor, and I got quite lucky. I was able to get good few pieces of ancient debris in the short span. I knew I wasn't going to find stacks and stacks, but enough to tie myself over, and I was able to get six ancient debris, which is what I needed. I crafted two iron ingots and got my armor to full netherite armor. And this is it. I'm fully kitted out. Day 100 was not long coming by and then I knew that we were in the final stages. The end is near. This is it ladies and gentlemen. This is what we've been working so hard towards. The portal was right below me and I decided to get it prepared. I decided to place all my eyes of ender so I was ready to jump in. But as I was going to ender pearl out of there, I quickly made a mistake. When I threw that ender pearl, I fell in and I was underprepared. I had to face the dragon under equipped. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you want to see 200 days, make sure you like, comment and subscribe and I will see you all in the next video.